For the first time in 19 years, there's a new role in WoW that absolutely no one knows how to play. Well, not exactly, as by the end of this video, we guarantee that you'll be topping the DPS charts and have everyone sending you a friend request after all of your M plus runs. But skill capped, augmentation evokers have only just come out, how on earth can you teach us how to play it already? Fret not, for we've just spent the last two weeks working meticulously with MDI experts from Method and Echo, who've been figuring the ins and outs of the spec to bring you this guide on how to master augmentation of ochres in Mythic Plus. Before we dive into the specifics, remember all research was done on the PTR prior to the spec's release. Now let's briefly discuss how augmentation fits into the game. Augmentation sets a new precedent by introducing the support class archetype, although it may not align with the traditional understanding of support roles found in other games. The Augmentation Evoker is still primarily a DPS class, focused on dealing as much damage as possible while also bolstering their teammates' performance on the DPS and healing meters. When queuing for dungeons, Augmentation counts as a DPS class, maintaining the standard composition of one tank, one healer, and three DPS players. The class utilizes the standard Evoker tree and incorporates abilities familiar to Devastation and Preservation Evokers. As a ranged spec, the Augmentation Evoker operates within a 25-yard range, similar to other Evoker specializations, which means it may not have the same advantage of easily outranging mechanics and casts. The Augmentation Evoker has a great mastery stat, which has two effects. Firstly, casting an empowered ability grants an ally a buff called Shifting Sands, which benefits DPS players by increasing their versatility by more than 7%. Additionally, Evoker Mastery also increases the duration of other buffs and auras by over 9%. Mastery is definitely the best stat for an augmentation evoker and you'll be looking to stack it as much as possible. Now let's delve into the unique offensive abilities that define augmentation evoker. One of the most crucial aspects of the spec is Ebon Might. This ability grants a 14% increase in the primary stat of the evoker to the four nearest allies. For example, it converts 14% of the evoker's intellect into strength for a warrior or agility for a rogue. This effect lasts for 10.5 seconds, scaling with mastery. Additionally, Ebon Might also buffs the Evoker, providing a 14% damage increase. The ability has a 30 second cooldown, resulting in a baseline uptime of approximately 33%. However, the uptime can be extended through empowered abilities, essence spenders, and the mastery stat, allowing for potentially high uptime. Understanding and effectively utilizing Ebon Might is essential for maximizing the Augmentation Evoker's contribution to the group's damage output and overall performance. Another significant addition to the Augmentation Evoker's arsenal is the ability Eruption. Serving as the primary essence spender, Eruption costs two essence to cast and deals substantial baseline AoE damage to the target and nearby enemies. Notably, this spell also extends the duration of Ebon Might by one second, further enhancing its impact. Upheaval is the new empowered spell introduced to the Augmentation Evoker. At rank 1, Upheaval causes all enemies within 3 yards of the target to suffer volcanic damage and be launched into the air. The range of this ability can be empowered, extending it to 6 yards at rank 2, 9 yards at rank 3, and to 12 yard radius at rank 4. However, empowering the ability does not increase its damage. Upheaval has a 40 second cooldown and extends the duration of Ebon Might by 2 seconds. Breath of Eons replaces Deep Breath as Augmentation's major offensive cooldown. When activated, the Augmentation Evoker takes to the skies and travels to a designated location, damaging all enemies in its path with temporal wounds. This debuff lasts just over 10 seconds and accumulates 21% of all damage dealt to the affected mobs by allies with Ebon Might. Upon expiration of the debuff, the accumulated damage critically strikes the debuffed enemies, resulting in significant damage. Breath of Eons is a 2 minute cooldown and extends the duration of Ebon Might by 5 seconds. Prescience is another powerful buff ability that enhances the supportive aspect of the class. This spell grants an ally a 3% increase in critical strike chance and provides you with a chance to occasionally replicate their damage and healing spells at 15% of their potency for approximately 19 seconds. With a mere 12 second cooldown, Prescience allows for potentially high uptime on two targets. If no specific ally is targeted, the ability will prioritize selecting a nearby DPS player. Time Skip is a crucial ability that requires strategic play. Similar to a mage's shifting power, Time Skip involves channeling for 2 seconds, during which your cooldowns recover at a rate 1000% faster. This ability can be further enhanced with a talent and serves as an effective way to rapidly refresh major offensive abilities. Understanding and effectively utilizing these abilities is essential for mastering the Augmentation Evoker and fully capitalizing on the spec's supportive capabilities in a group setting as well as doing the most damage you can. Before delving into the various rotations and boss openings for Augmentation Evoker, it's important to establish key goals that will maximize your efficiency in this role. 
These goals should guide your decision making and play style throughout the dungeon. Here are five crucial objectives to focus on. Maintain Ebon Might uptime. Strive to keep Ebon Might active for as close to 100% of the time as possible. Sustain prescience on two targets. Aim to keep prescience active on two targets as consistently as you can. Coordinate well-executed Breath of Eons windows by communicating and coordinate with your team. Efficient Essence Spending. Utilize your Essence primarily on Eruption and avoid overcapping Essence at any point. Maintain Blistering Scales on the tank. Ensure that you consistently apply and refresh Blistering Scales on the tank. Now we have some established rules, let's discuss the priority system during a sustained DPS phase outside of cooldowns. Note that Augmentation Evokers follow a priority system that remains consistent for both single target and AoE situations. Maintain Ebon Might uptime. As previously emphasized, the primary goal is to keep Ebon Might active as much as possible. To give yourself the best chance of doing this, you should aim to snapshot the buff when it has less than 30% of its base duration remaining. At low levels of mastery, this will be at around 3 seconds, but as you gear up and your mastery increases, you'll need to calculate the correct snapshotting time yourself. In addition to snapshotting the buff, Essence Spenders and Empowered Abilities will also extend the uptime. Use Prescience frequently. With its low cooldown, Prescience should be used often and prioritized after Ebon Might. Ensure you use it on the appropriate targets. In an M plus scenario, you may want to set up macros to guarantee that Prescience is always applied to your designated target. Use Fire Breath at rank 1 Empowerment. The only caveat is that you should only use it as long as it will be available for your next Breath of Eons window. You must also ensure the target will live long enough for the dot effect to expire. If necessary, empower Fire Breath further to optimize its upfront damage at the cost of dot damage. Use Upheaval to hit all mobs ideally at rank 1 empowerment, again while making sure it will be available during your next Breath of Eons window. Prioritize spending your Essence Resource or Essence Burst procs on Casting Eruption. This ability serves as the primary Essence Spender for Augmentation Evoker. Ensure that you keep Blistering Scales active on the tank and refresh it after the final stack has been consumed. This provides additional damage and enhances the tank's survivability. Finally, use Living Flame or Azure Strike as your filler, depending on your choice of talents. If you have the talent Pupil of Alexstrasza, use Living Flame as a filler ability. Otherwise, if you have the Echoing Strike talent, fill with Azure Strike to increase the chances of triggering Essence Burst procs, which can be used for free eruptions. By following this priority system, you can effectively manage your abilities and maximize your damage output as an Augmentation Evoker in sustained DPS phases. Remember to adapt and adjust based on talent choices and the specific demands of the encounter or dungeon. Now we've established how to play during a sustained period of DPS outside of our cooldowns, let's address the opener. In Mythic Plus, you won't often have a full pull timer to set up your opener, but it's still worth considering how to be optimal. Here's a breakdown of the opener for an Augmentation Evoker, which establishes the initial sequence of casts in a timed scenario. Keep in mind that the specific timing may vary. As a baseline, start casting with around 5 seconds remaining on the pull timer, but depending on your haste and mastery, you may need to adjust accordingly to avoid pre-pulling. Begin by casting Blistering Scales on the tank. Follow with Ebon Might, ensuring your four nearest allies benefit from the primary stat increase. Then cast Prescience on a DPS player who will have the highest burst damage during the opener. Next, use Tip the Scales for the upcoming Fire Breath. Then, with around two seconds remaining on the timer, precast Living Flames, aiming for it to connect with the boss as the timer hits zero. As combat begins, activate Bloodlust either by yourself or have an ally cast it. Cast Fire Breath, which will be fully empowered due to Tip the Scales. Then use Upheaval at Empowered Rank 1. Next, we'll finally cast Breath of Eons, which we delay until this point to allow other DPS specs to execute their openers and enter their burst phase. Following this, activate your DPS Potion and On Use Trinket, with Iridius Fragment being a recommended choice for the 10.1.5 patch. You should then use Time Skip to recover your cooldowns at an accelerated rate. If Prescience is off cooldown, based on Mastery and Haste, cast it on a second target to maintain its uptime on two targets. Then spam Eruption to spend all Essence until you can snapshot Ebb and Might, which we explained earlier. Finally, you'll then transition into the sustained DPS rotation, prioritizing Ebb and Might and Prescience uptime above all else. Now that we've mastered our opener, let's talk about the Burst Window. Evoker at its essence is a spec about buffing allies and having a huge burst window during these buffs, so it's important we really get this part right. The key factor here is that our damage is entirely based on how much damage our allies do, so making sure they have cooldowns up every time we cast Breath of Eons is essential. With that said, let's talk through setting up a Breath of Eons window, the Augmentation Evoker's main burst. 
Start by pre-buffing your team with Ebon Might, providing a stat buff to your entire group. Next, apply Prescience to your main damage dealer, prioritizing someone who benefits greatly from critical strike chance and has active cooldowns available, which is essential for maximizing the effectiveness of the burst window. If they don't have cooldowns, prioritize a class that does, even if critical strike is not their primary stat. After applying Prescience, use Tip the Scales to prepare a fully empowered Fire Breath at maximum rank. Then cast Breath of Eons, ensuring that it hits all the target mobs in the area. Now use your DPS potion and on use trinket to maximize damage. Immediately follow up with an instant fully empowered Fire Breath. This should be done as quickly as possible to maintain the burst window. Next, cast Upheaval at rank 1 Empowerment, before spamming Eruption to spend all of your essence. If you have enough haste and mastery to extend the duration of Breath of Eons and speed up the cast of Fire Breath, consider using Time Skip when Fire Breath has around 15 seconds remaining cooldown. This will allow you to fit in a second cast during the burst window. It's crucial to ensure that the second cast of Fire Breath goes off before the window ends, even if it's not fully empowered, in order to maximize your DPS potential. The second cast of Fire Breath will then give you the Leaping Flames buff. Use this on an empowered Living Flame and aim to hit as many targets as possible with this ability. Finally, use Azure Strike to generate Essence Burst procs and spend these procs on casting Eruption. With that now learned, we have the full rotation of Augmentation Evoker down and you're ready to enter Mythic Plus and bring your team to greatness. There's only a few pieces left to the Augmentation Evoker puzzle, so let's talk about a big piece, Defensive Play. There are a few really interesting defensive abilities added with the introduction of this spec that make it seemingly extremely tanky. Let's go through them and their use cases. Black Attunement is an always-on defensive ability that provides a 4% extra stamina bonus to the entire party. Although you should stay in Bronze Attunement between pulls for the 10% extra movement speed effect, which really adds up over the course of a dungeon, make sure to always swap back to Black Attunement whenever you're in combat. Blistering Scales is an ability that allows you to grant an ally, usually the tank in Mythic Plus, 15 explosive scales. These scales provide them with bonus armor equal to 30% of your own armor. When the ally is attacked by melee attacks, the scales explode and deal damage to the attacker. However, this explosion can only occur every few seconds. It is recommended to have Blistering Scales active on the tank most of the time. However, in situations where another party member is about to receive a large physical hit, applying blistering scales to them can be crucial, as the additional armor from a male user can make a significant difference in their survival. Obsidian Scales is the primary defensive ability of an Augmentation Evoker. When activated, it reduces all incoming damage by 30% for a duration of 13 seconds. The effectiveness of this damage reduction scales with your mastery. Additionally, Obsidian Scales has two charges, allowing you to use it proactively to mitigate damage rather than reactively. By utilizing both charges strategically, you can limit the amount of healing required from your healer and better manage sudden spikes of damage or significant hits. Renewing Blaze is another crucial defensive ability for Augmentation Evokers. When activated, it enables the Evoker to gradually heal back all their damage taken over an 8 second period. This ability is particularly useful for recovering from ticking or rot damage, allowing you to passively restore your health without relying on active healing spells. By using Renewing Blaze strategically, you can maintain your health pool during sustained periods of damage and alleviate some of the pressure on your healer. Zephyr is a beneficial ability that provides buffs to you and your four closest allies. When activated, it lifts you all into the air, granting a 30% movement speed increase. Additionally, it reduces area of effect damage taken by 20% for approximately 8 seconds. This ability is particularly useful when anticipating significant incoming AoE damage. By using Zephyr during such situations, you can enhance the survivability of your entire team and mitigate the impact of widespread damage. Verdant Embrace, a versatility ability that allows the Evoker to fly to an ally and heal them for a significant amount of health. It serves as a helpful tool for providing targeted healing support to your allies when they are in need. Additionally, you can also use Verdant Embrace on yourself to restore a substantial amount of health, particularly in dangerous situations where you require immediate healing. This ability empowers you to quickly respond to critical moments and ensure your own survivability or that of your teammates. Defy Fate is the Augmentation Evoker's cheat death. It allows the Evoker to survive one otherwise fatal blow, as well as healing themselves for over 100k and providing a burst of healing to four nearby allies over 9 seconds to help alleviate a dangerous situation that would have otherwise claimed the Evoker's life. Now before you let loose in dungeons, let's talk about your utility or control spells. Abilities that will make the dungeon easier to traverse by interrupting, disrupting, or helping your allies outside of just dealing damage. Firstly, Augmentation Evokers have a kick ability called Quell on a baseline 40 second cooldown. This cooldown can be reduced to 20 seconds with the talent Imposing Presence, and we recommend taking this talent in almost every Mythic Plus scenario. 
A pressing roar is an ability on a 2 minute cooldown that debuffs all enemies in a frontal cone for 10 seconds. During this time, any crowd control abilities used on a debuff target will last 50% longer, resulting in longer stuns, silences, and other forms of crowd control. This ability is incredibly important and should be used on dangerous packs in higher keys to gain better control over the situation. Emerald Blossom drops a bulb on the ground, healing anyone within 10 yards of the location for a moderate amount. This ability is great for providing some additional healing support if you want to assist your healer. Wing Buffet is a 1.5 minute frontal cone knockback that can be used to disrupt or interrupt a pack or to knock them out of Sanguine, for example. Alongside Wing Buffet is Tail Swipe, again on a 1.5 minute cooldown, which instead knocks enemies within 8 yards into the air, interrupting spellcasts once again. Time Spiral is a 2 minute cooldown that will allow you and your allies within 40 yards to use their movement abilities again for the next 10 or so seconds, even if they're on cooldown. This can help you navigate through a dungeon quickly or assist in repositioning as a group during a boss fight. Its effectiveness may vary depending on your group composition, as some classes may not benefit greatly from it, but it certainly has incredible use cases. Landslide roots enemies in its path for 30 seconds. This can be further buffed to also stun with talents, but even without a stun, it can still be used to stop specific enemies from running toward or away from you, making it a great tool for something like Spiteful Shades. Expunge removes all poison effects from an ally, a useful tool in the 10.1 dungeon rotation. Fury of the Aspects is the Evoker Heroism and Bloodlust. Make sure to coordinate it for maximum damage output. Source of Magic is an ability you put on your healer, and every time you cast an empowered ability, it restores 0.25% of their mana per empower level. For any high mana cost healers, this could be a huge way to make them more viable and limit mana breaks. No spec is complete without some finesse, so here are some cool tips and tricks to really min-max your augmentation evoker. Let's start with learning efficient use of Hover. Hover is a valuable ability that allows you to move and cast simultaneously. It has two charges and a 35 second cooldown. To make the most of it, avoid using it for minor movements or dodging insignificant mechanics. Instead, save it for situations that require substantial movement or repositioning. For example, during encounters with bosses like Harlan Sweet and Freehold, consider saving your hover charges for when you need to navigate through more significant movement phases, such as evading cannon barrage. By using hover strategically, you can ensure its availability for crucial moments and maximize your overall damage output. Hover is also off the GCD, but does have an animation that needs to be completed before you can cast again. This can be played around by casting hover during a GCD to ensure both the hover cast animation and the global cooldown finish at the same time to get back into your cast sequence. Rescue is a great gap closer too. It's not just an ability to save a friend. You can use it to bait mechanics with another ranged and then return both yourself and them back to a closer range to get back into the fray. This can also be used for some skips that would usually require a gateway. And with that, you're now ready to take your Augmentation Evoker into Mythic Plus and climb the ladder with Blizzard's newest spec. Remember that communication is vital for success with the spec. The more cooldowns your teammates use together during your Breath of Eons window, the more damage you will do as a unit. Playing perfectly for 30 minutes isn't always possible, so communicating timers and asking people to hold will simplify the dungeon by making packs die faster. Remember to keep Ebon Might and Prescience uptime as close to 100% as possible while spending your essence well and you'll be timing keys on your Augmentation Evoker in no time. If you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to like the video and subscribe to Skillcap for more high quality Mythic Plus content. As always, thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.